more and more like spring here in northeast Wisconsin. Let's go ahead and get a quick check on your forecast with Chief Meteorologist Cameron Moreland. And another batch of mild air is now moving in from the south. It is currently 32 degrees in Green Bay, but we've got 42 in Madison. It's 44 in Milwaukee. That warmth will be overspreading the NBC 26 viewing area later on tonight into tomorrow morning. Along with it, a good chance for showers. You can see a large area of showers now coming together here across northeastern Iowa and southwestern Wisconsin. And believe it or not, there could actually be a rumble of thunder out there somewhere later on tonight into tomorrow. Here's a look at your school day forecast. Prepare for some wet weather and fog. Upper 30s at the bus stop, lower to mid 40s by the final bell. Back to you. Thanks, Cameron. We are covering the first 100 days of the new administration. President Trump's getting ready for his first speech to Congress tomorrow night, and he's telling lawmakers how he plans to spend tax money. Tracy Potts has your first look at the Trump budget. $54 billion. That's what President Trump wants to add and cut from the federal budget, starting with better equipment for the military. Only do one thing, win. We have to win. We have to start winning wars again. Like the fight against ISIS, the Pentagon presented a new plan today. The Trump budget would boost defense spending 10 percent and provide more for intelligence and homeland security, the border, paid for by cutting foreign aid, environmental programs, and non-defense programs. We don't know where the cuts are coming from, but it's hard to see with this magnitude of cuts that, once again, uh, middle class people, working families are going to be hurt. Still unknown, will this budget add to the nation's growing debt? The places he's looking to pay for things are the smallest areas of the budget. The biggest areas? Medicare, Social Security and Medicaid. Those would go untouched. Tomorrow, President Trump pitches his budget to lawmakers. They have to approve it. For now, lawmakers are still weighing whether to order a special prosecutor to investigate Trump ties with Russia. What I've been told uh, is by many by by many folks uh, is that uh, there's there's nothing there. How many people have to say that there's nothing there before you realize there's nothing there? Russia, your tax dollars, all of it fueling President Trump's upside down approval rating. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. Governor Scott Walker, one of several governors meeting with President Trump at the White House. Walker spoke with the president about a number of things, including health care, infrastructure, and building the workforce in our state. He also says more power should be given to the states under this administration. We know how to make things work better in our states than people do in Washington, and it's great to have a president and administration that understands and respects that. So you'll see the details of what we've been working on uh, later this week as we roll that out. Governor Walker also said he's encouraged about replacing the Affordable Care Act. President Trump will deliver his first State of the Union style address tomorrow. NBC 26's Trace Stacey Ingebrigts and did a one on one interview today with NBC political analyst Nicole Wallace to get her predictions on the speech as well as her take on other hot topics. President Trump is addressing a joint session of Congress tomorrow. What can we expect? Listen, I think Donald Trump is deeply committed to doing Donald Trump, and that means lashing out at his critics. That means doubling down on an agenda that um, is far from unifying. People talk a lot about him as a great negotiator, a deal maker. I haven't seen any evidence of that. To me, he seems like someone who draws red lines and spends all of his time making sure we see where they are. Nicole Wallace recently visited Sturgeon Bay as part of her In Trump They Trust series. She interviewed Brian LaPlante to find out why the farmer and lifelong Democrat voted Republican this election, helping Wisconsin go red for the first time since 1984. Well, we always thought Democrat was for the working people. I don't think that's the case anymore. The overriding issue was radical change, was electing an outsider, and was having a businessman run this country. That's the common thread I find in Trump supporters all across the country. There was a poll that came out over the weekend. It was an NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, and it found that his approval rating right now is 44 percent, which is the lowest for a newly inaugurated president. What is your reaction to that? 
It is the lowest approval rating in sort of my career in politics. It speaks to the incredibly divisive nature of his candidacy and of his presidency. On the upside, it means that the people that voted for him are still with him. 44% is probably about what he got in terms of the vote. He needs to keep it right there. And I think that this White House will be in trouble if the number goes, shrinks from there. Well, what is your take on President Trump and the media and that relationship right now? You know, I just think it's a waste of energy. Really, he has so much affection from his voters and from his supporters, and I think that most of them would like to see him focus on his agenda and on what he campaigned on, to the exclusion of this, this really hot war with the national media. And that was Stacey Ingebretson reporting. Wallace visited seven states for her special report. She plans to return to Wisconsin later to get a presidential progress report from LaPlante. Wallace will appear on the Today Show tomorrow morning right here on NBC 26. And we'll have coverage of President Trump's speech tomorrow on Live at 10. The State Department of Revenue says it has stopped $255 million in potentially fraudulent tax refunds and credits over the last six years. The department recommends people allow two to three weeks for their returns to be processed so it can run through an ID verification system to make sure someone isn't trying to file a false return. The department says its anti-fraud efforts stopped more than $63 million in refunds and credits last year. The Wyoiga Fremont School Board approves a new policy denied allowing their school nurses to administer Narcan in case of emergencies. Narcan is a drug reversing the effects of opioid overdose. The policy also allows authorized people like police officers and firefighters to use their own supplies of Narcan when responding to a suspected drug overdose on the district's property. Administrators say the medication will be stored in a safe and secure place on campus. If we were in a situation knowing that uh, somebody was having uh, an overdose reaction and we weren't able to assist, but we could have, that would be troublesome for me. So I would like to be prepared and in the forefront. An overdose has never occurred on the district's property. Well, the pop-up city of ice shanties on Lake Winnebago has already vanished, along with another sturgeon spearing season. Coming up, why the DNR is calling this year's season a success. And scientists joining the Coast Guard breaking ice on the bay, what they hope to learn about Lake Michigan ice. You're connected to NBC 26 News at 10 with Cassandra Duvall, Billy Waggins, Chief Meteorologist Cameron Moreland, and Sports Director Charlie Sakaitis. NBC 26 News at 10, keeping you connected.
And now, your Storm Shield forecast with NBC26 Chief Meteorologist Cameron Moreland. The high temperature last Wednesday was 65 degrees. On Saturday, 24. We warmed up to 41 yesterday and we hit 40 today. And this roller coaster of weather is going to continue. Let's take a look at the next seven days. We'll see highs mainly in the mid 40s tomorrow. Upper 20s to lower 30s Wednesday, Thursday and Friday and then 40s and some 50s return as we head into early next week. Right now we are looking at temperatures that range from the mid 20s in Mountain to the mid 30s in Fond du Lac and what you see is what you get for low temperatures tonight because we're going to start climbing from here on out. It is 34 degrees right now in the valley in Green Bay. We're looking at a temperature of 32 degrees with light winds and slowly increasing clouds. High pressure, our main weather maker today, giving us lots of sunshine. It is now pushing off towards the east, allowing our next weather maker to approach from the south and west. It's an area of low pressure now developing in northeastern Colorado and out ahead of it this evening. We have an area of showers developing across Illinois, eastern Iowa and southwestern Wisconsin, and that activity is moving north and east. And as it does so, it's going to increase in aerial coverage and intensity as it makes its way towards northeast Wisconsin. By 2 o'clock in the morning, showers will be moving in from the south and west. It's cold enough that a little bit of a wintry mix is possible at the onset, especially north and west of the Fox Valley. Showers will continue throughout the night, maybe even a rumble of thunder. Most of us will probably not hear that, but there's that chance. And then as we head through tomorrow, look for periods of showers and thunderstorms across central and eastern Wisconsin. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center actually has part of the viewing area under a marginal threat for severe thunderstorms tomorrow. And that is south and east of Lake Winnebago, including parts of Fond du Lac and Sheboygan counties, where there's a chance that some of the storms may produce some hail. Besides that, the main threat would be some briefly heavy rain. Now, as you take a look at your Tuesday forecast here, you can see along with the chance for some showers and thunderstorms, we will see temperatures running about 10 to 15 degrees above normal for this time of year. Now, on the back side of that system I just showed you, Colder air is going to start pouring in from the north. And as that happens, another system is going to ride in from the south and west for tomorrow night into Wednesday. And that system is going to produce accumulating snow across most of northeast Wisconsin. We'll see snow Wednesday morning tapering off to light snow showers and flurries by the afternoon. When all is said and done, it looks like areas north of Green Bay will see a dusting to perhaps a couple of inches. And then from about Green Bay south, more than likely about two to four inches with some locally higher amounts. And of course, I will be fine tuning the forecast as we get a little bit closer. So tune in tomorrow night. All right, your forecast for tonight calls for clouds and showers, overnight lows right now, climbing from here on out. There could be a rumble of thunder out there somewhere. Tomorrow, showers and a few thunderstorms, foggy and mild. High temperatures will be in the 40s. As we head into Wednesday, snow tapering to light snow or flurries by the afternoon and windy. Colder, look for a high of 30, some sunshine on Thursday and Friday with high temperatures right around 30 degrees. And then we're going to warm back up again, maybe a snow shower on Saturday, lower 40s and then highs ranging from the mid 40s to the mid 50s on Sunday and Monday with the chance for a few more showers and thunderstorms. So it looks like March, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Will come in like a lion with some accumulating snow. Absolutely. Yeah, wow. weekend doesn't look too bad though. Looks kind of like spring. It does. Even 42 on yeah. Saturday, some sunshine. That's going to feel pretty nice, and we'll have to see about 50s Sunday and Monday. All right, sounds great. Thanks okay, so much, Cameron. Right. Well, some special guests today on uh, one of the Coast Guard ice breaking missions. Scientists studying the lake ice with hopes of improving the information they get from satellites in space. Plus, sturgeon season comes to an end in Northeast Wisconsin. Why the DNR is happy with this year's harvest.
Welcome back. Calculating ice conditions could be done very differently in the future. Today on Lake Michigan, a team of scientists and the U.S. Coast Guard exploring a new way of testing ice safety. NBC 26's Eric Crest was on board the icebreaker today. He has more. Traveling on an icebreaker provided by the U.S. Coast Guard, a team of scientists embarked on a trip today from Sturgeon Bay to the Bay of Green Bay trying to learn more about ice. Using satellite images of Lake Michigan, this team of scientists attempted to estimate ice thickness by looking at ice formations on the surface before they got on site. Now they would then get off the icebreaker and physically check the ice depth. They say by predicting how thick the ice is, it could make travel on major bodies of ice safer. So the ice ca uh, characteristic can be very different. It can be a thin ice, it can be thicker ice. And what we try to do is use the satellite technology to map uh, the different type of ice. And for each different classes of ice, there are a range of thickness associated with that. This technology is in the beginning phases today, but that team of scientists say it could make freighter travel, even fishing travel in the winter, more safe down the road. Keeping you connected, I'm Eric Crest with NBC 26. Now the scientists believe by using both on-site testing and satellite images, they can calculate the ice thickness just a little bit easier. Well, a powerful force of nature worked its way across Lake Winnebago this weekend. Ice shoves are caused by strong winds blowing ice chunks onto shore, piling one on top of the other. These massive ice shoves in Fond du Lac attracting hundreds of sightseers to Lake Winnebago on Sunday. Tonight, the DNR is calling the sturgeon spearing season a success despite poor water clarity, deteriorating ice, and no fish taken the final four days. DNR sturgeon biologist Ryan Koenig says he's happy with the season because over 5,000 shanties were out there on the Lake Winnebago system, the second highest count in history. And some monsters were even taken as well, with nine weighing more than 140 pounds. In total, 847 sturgeon were harvested this year. We'll be right back with sports.